welcome to RV Retirement Redesign, where our retirement is not what we thought it was going to be. Thank goodness. We've joined the full-time RV phenomenon and we love it. So stay tuned for tips and tricks and ideas, regardless of whether you're a full-time RVer, a traveling RVer, in your retirement, or just starting out. So like, subscribe, and ring that bell. So welcome back to RV Retirement Redesign. And I thought it was time to fill you in on why year three was the year of discontent. Let me start by saying, when you get into this lifestyle, you pretty much have a plan. Now, it is an idea of a plan because you really don't know how all of the components of what it is you want, what it is you need, what's available to you is all going to fall together. And sometimes it falls together very nicely and sometimes not quite so much. So if you watched my videos for any length of time, you know that we pretty much were looking for a long-term season where my husband, Bob, could be a fishing guide in the mountains of Colorado. And we had a comfortable, fun place to live where we wouldn't have to really put down too many roots. In other words, we didn't want to buy a house. We didn't want to have to climb stairs. We didn't want to have to do a lot of groundskeeping, particularly in the winter time. So then in our research, the whole idea of tiny living came up and even drilling that down more so into living in an RV. Now, some of the things that we wanted was to have a space we could put the RV for a long-term season, make it comfortable both inside and out. We moved from 4,200 square feet to 420 square feet. So what was that going to be like? And how are we going to do that? And where were we going to put our stuff? We were also looking for a community that was like-minded, like-minded in the idea of having an aesthetically pleasing grounds. So understanding that the way your yard, the way your presentation of your RV looks will impact the presentation and the way our RV looks too, and how RV living full-time looks to the community in general. You know, there's still a lot of stigma out there about full-time living and who does that? And we're trying to change that. Anybody can do this. It isn't about a specific condition of life. It's about a specific type of living you're choosing to make in this time of life. Now, towards the end of season two, we were actually still living in the RV most of the time and commuting into town uh, to our business, our place of business, for another year. We had it all planned out. Everything was going very, very well, and all we needed was one more year. We could sell the business, and we would have a nice nest egg for our retirement. Now, during this time we were doing this commuting and transitioning, I had a couple of things that I was really working on. Since we would not be having the income from our business any longer, even though we'd have the nest egg put away after we sold it, one of the things I was hoping for was to be able to utilize this channel in such a way that the value was so much that I would be able to monetize my YouTube channel. And that just didn't happen. In addition, many YouTube influencers will use their channels to help promote different products that they use. And I try to do that as well on this channel, promoting products that I find to be very useful in RV living. And by you and others who think that that's a value to you as well, and you make those purchases on Amazon, your price doesn't change, but as an influencer and an affiliate, we get a little percentage off of that. So the goal was to not only monetize the YouTube channel, but also be able to have the affiliate marketing that would bring in a, a nice little you know, monthly income that would allow me to be able to keep up with all of the details it takes to be able to run a YouTube channel. And that didn't happen either. During the first couple years of living in the RV, it was really, it was actually fun. I mean, I really worried about downsizing from 4,200 square feet to 420 square feet. But I find in this season of life, I really like that. I do think that having um, less stuff in this season of life is a really good thing. It frees you up to live in a more simplistic way. And I find I really like that. I had fun recreating my home. Now, it was important to me when we started out on this venture that we have a new RV. We had the finances to be able to do that. So it was important to be able to you know, have something that hopefully was not going to have 
a lot of problems and we wouldn't be inheriting problems from somebody else. And I wanted to create my own dirt and didn't want to live in somebody else's. And lucky enough, we were able to do that. So by having a brand new home, we there was a lot of recreation that had to happen and to figure out where things were going to go and how we were going to make this our home and to make an RV more homey. Now, a lot of that really did happen. We had fun setting up our home. We met good friends. Um, we have some community of like-minded people. And yet, a little bit of disenchantment, a little bit of the cracks in the happiness started happening in that year three. And basically, it was things like where we were living did not have the kind of mental safety that we really thought we would have. And part of that are things like communities not really encouraged. I'm not quite sure why, but it isn't a place where they want people to, you know, get to know each other in great detail anyway. It was also becoming less dog friendly. And you all know we have Isabella and she is my baby. And I want her to have a really great experience and I can't be worrying about whether she barks at somebody and then we're going to get kicked out of our spot. It's really important for a lot of people in our community to really want to make their space theirs, to have it very aesthetically pleasing. And that means putting some things up and around. And it seemed like every time we were asking about things to enhance the lives of the people that actually live here, the answer was always no, no. No and no. All of those kinds of things brought more and more discouragement. And that really kind of stifles the spirit. And then COVID hits. One of the casualties of COVID was our business. Because we worked with entrepreneurs, because we had office space and event space and meeting space, um, obviously nobody could meet in those spaces any longer. And while we had the most amazing landlord that allowed us to hang in there as long as we could, we just couldn't do it anymore. And we lost our investment. So now not only did we not have that income coming in, we lost that investment. Our YouTube channel wasn't being monetized. Our efforts, the efforts to make our home more community oriented and aesthetically pleasing, dog friendly, and just a great place to live was having some discouragement as well. And all of that just brought a whole year of discontent. Well into the whole COVID situation, I got two amazing phone calls in the same week. And both of those organizations was asking if I would help them with a project. Now, my background is in education, specifically in leadership training, and they felt like the organizations that I had helped before were in need of the kind of help I could continue to give them. So we worked out a way that I could help them develop the skills and the tools that they needed for their organizations. And for me to be able to give back to companies that really gave to me and really helped me in my development and in my success as a educational leader. The other thing this did is it really helped me set up an evergreen funnel that will go well into hopefully our retirement years. And perhaps even when I'm no longer here, it will be able to live on as long as it's still of value and bring in a trust fund for our grandkids. So that's great. That's a win that actually happened out of that. However, it's very time consuming. It doesn't go as quickly as your plans always seem to want them to go. And this is frankly a season in my life that I have less energy. I really want to be able to create these different avenues with either the YouTube channel or working with these educators or or working on my home and create an atmosphere that is comfortable, aesthetically pleasing, and I feel mentally safe in my community. The other thing that I found as I was working through all this is that you really have to be motivated to do these channels. You know, YouTube is saturated with RV channels. And I believe it's really important when you are sharing, like I am with you, that we are creating a way to share 
in a specific niche, something that is going to be really of value to you. So I'm not going to do videos about traveling with your RV here, there, and everywhere, because that's not who we are. We are stationary RV lovers. Now, we are in our semi-retirement years, and you might be in a young family years, but the commonality that we have is that we are stationary in our RVs. And it might be that maybe the commonality is not that we're stationary or that we rove, but that we have an RV that we're trying to provide storage in or make a home. So we find these commonalities and that's what we want to focus on. But as I shared, social media and particularly YouTube is saturated. So it's really difficult to get the number of subscribers that you need. I believe it's still around a thousand to be able to be monetized. And there are hundreds of YouTube sharers on affiliate marketing like Amazon. And if you really want to be an influencer and have make a living at it, you really have to study the market. You have to know how to do the hustle. You have to know how to be so attractive and engaging that your viewers will subscribe and come back and watch the whole channel. And that's been difficult for me. But here's what I finally decided through all of this. I'm not really here for the money. I don't believe I could make hundreds of dollars. I mean, there's great, you, I'm no Mr. Beast, let's put it that way. But the reality is I have a passion for this. I want to share these things. And if I don't make money at it, well, so what? And if I make a little bit, great, thank you. I appreciate you supporting our channel to be able to do that. But it really isn't about that. So what is next for us and what's next for this channel? Here's a few things that I'm thinking about, and I would really honestly like your feedback on this. What I think is going to happen during this fourth year of living in the RV is the whole idea of really living. You know, when you start out, you have this wonderful notion of if you bring something in, you've got to take something out because there's only so much space in the RV. Well, that didn't really happen. So all of that organization that I did three years ago, it's not working now. Plus, there's new materials out. There are different kinds of supplies available to us. There's different organizational techniques. And because of what I have learned that failed as much as what I've learned that worked, I have lots of different ideas to share with you on that. So that's what we're going to be doing. Sharing what it looks like in reality. For instance, one of the things living in the mountains of Colorado is that, yeah, the RV gets really dirty inside sometimes. And because I do try to keep up with the vacuum and the carpet cleaner and all those things, the reality, my rugs are really dirty and I'm going to show them to you in an upcoming video. Every time I've done a video in the past, I pretty much made sure I've cleaned everything up. We've done a really good job of wiping down the walls and cleaning up and making things shiny. And, and, it, and it looks like an unreal picture. It looks like it was stage set. And yeah, it kind of was. But I want to show you what it really looks like when we get up in the morning and when we go to bed at night and the days that it's just like we just live within it. You know, there are things going on in our life. For instance, we are getting ready for a trip and I've got suitcases laying here, there and everywhere and stacks of things in the garage that we're going to take on our trip. And it's a mess. You've got to step over. And let me just say, it's not comfortable, but those are seasons when you live in a small place in an RV like this. So we'll share some of that reality as well. We do have to figure out our full-time living situation. What are we going to do in the spring? It's important when you live in the mountains of Colorado not to try to move your RV during the winter time. Much too difficult because of the snow, the mud, and just all of the ice, the problems that would bring. You can't hook up your water and your sewer and all that kind of thing very easily. So we are staying put through the winter season. But we have to have a plan for the spring because it's important that we find a place that really fits us. So we are in the midst of some scenario planning, and I'm going to share some of those scenarios with you to get your feedback as well. 
And we are going to do a few road trips. In fact, we're going to be taking a two-week vacation to Texas. And we're staying in an RV park, but we're not staying in an RV. We're actually going to stay in a cabin. And we're visiting some folks who will be in their RVs. I'm hoping to maybe do a couple of interviews while I'm there, but to also show you that park. I have a couple of special guests that I want to introduce you to. And they might have some surprising insights for what's happening in the future of RV parks. I want to just say to you, I apologize for being gone so long. Thank you for hanging in there with RV Retirement Redesign. And I really hope that as this next season of the channel evolves, while we won't be able to do one video a week like we used to, I do promise to do at least one a month and I'm hoping to get two a month out. And I might even surprise you to do a third now and then. So stay tuned. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you would like to know about this fourth year. Maybe there's some things you've thought of that I haven't. So thank you. If you enjoyed today's video, would you do us the favor of liking and subscribing? It's important for us to be able to get this information out to you. And we need your help. We look forward to seeing you next time.